What's up guys, update day. Uh, sorry it's been so long, I've been super busy with a bunch of other shit that's been going on and this is long overdue, but today I wanted to talk to you about um, an update on the suit build, the 3D printing, how far I've made it, everything I've done wrong, which, uh, well, there has been a, quite a few bits, and uh, today the big thing I think we're gonna be talking about is the arm. So I got both arms done of the suit, and this is kind of what we're gonna go over today, how I made the hands so flexible, um, the issues I've run into, and what's next from there. So let's get started. So as stated in the first video for this build, I knew going right into this that the helmet was probably gonna be the hardest part, which I think I was able to get done pretty nicely. Aside from that was gonna be the hands. Now these hand, getting the hands to fit and be functional and work properly has totally kicked my ass. Um, I went through a bunch of different files, a bunch of different STLs on getting different models and types. Uh, the one that seemed to be the most fruitful was this type of design. So it's a two part where the palm section kind of sits over your hand like so with, some, with the help of some rubber bands, which wasn't too bad. This fit pretty nicely. And then the rest of your hand slides to the back. And then you could, what you could do is secure it some way. This came out really big and beefy. Um, I didn't like this. Securing it was a little bit of a pain. Uh, the size was a little bit much. Maybe for like the older style suits with the, the bigger parts, this would be fine. But I just didn't, I don't know, it just didn't feel good. Um, so I, I wasn't a big fan of this design. I moved around with some other ones, but I finally landed on a very good design that uh, if you go on Thingiverse, there is, a, there is an STL file for uh, an entire Mark VI Iron Man suit. Um, great build, great suit. The hand file in it though is fantastic. And what that gave me was this type of palm. So what this is, this is a two-part palm. The entire palm section is one solid piece except the arc react the little uh, reactor in the middle. That actually pops right out. This is all one piece right here. And then the back plate is just, a just sits right on top of there. And I have it secured with rubber with um, elastic bands. So I'll talk about that later. And uh, what this allows you to do is keep the whole hand as one section, and then you can just slide your hand right through. It's a little pinchy right now. I still got to work that out. But slide your hand through. The palm stays there, nice and secure. You can bend your fingers around it, and then whichever way you want to secure this back plate, it sits and closes. And what that lets you do is it actually gives you pretty good wrist control and movement. Uh, what I found is actually if you tuck this in and push it in under, it, it makes it kind of seamless, look seamless. Um, so this this was absolutely the best hand file I found. This saved me a lot of trouble. It gives you a little uh, arc reactor bit that you could, I probably can go to print this in clear filament, throw some LEDs in it, there's holes for lights, and pop it right back in. And there's enough room in there to give you plenty of room. So once you get this printed, um, well first, let's talk about scaling, sorry. How did I make sure this fit? Well, I went through a couple different um, renditions. This was a much smaller palm that I printed. I'm just gonna paint it up and make a little desk piece for it. <coughs> scaling, how I've been scaling all this stuff. How did I get this to fit? A ruler. I know it sounds crazy and some people don't know like how to use these things but they make a really cool file and I'll try to find the actual link to it, but it's a, uh, it's a scale STL file that you can drop right into Cura. So what I'll do is I'll have the part in Cura being modeled, sitting there, and then you drop the ruler in there and it's perfectly scaled. So you leave that on the bed, you move it around, you flip it, you turn it, and however you need it to, wherever you need it to go, what I did for, say, this forearm is I measured the smallest hole. Um, I measured where my wrist needed to go through. So I measured the uh, side to side in Cura, how, how big the model's hole was, and then I measured my own wrist, I measured my own hand, I measured, you measure your own body parts and you compare them. And doing that, you scale the part, not the ruler, to the size of your actual body part. And it's let me scale all this stuff perfectly. There was a lot of trial and error, but so far it's worked great. Um, I'm, for my hand, I believe I measured uh, I measured the widest part, my th the knuckle, back knuckle on my thumb, over to like right about here on the side of my hand, I, and then in the program I measured the inside of this, not the outside, because there's going to be wall thickness and everything that you need to account for. And I measured the same same distance from inside here 
It's inside there. It's going to take some uh, getting used to. You can actually drop the ruler in and out of itself, uh, which helps a lot. Um, you can put the ruler through the model and kind of like collide them. Um, so play around with it. That was absolutely a godsend for this entire project. It also let me measure the bicep part. Um, I measured, again, the, the hole in the bottom that my forearm needs to go through. And then my whole arm can fit through. I can't really grab it with this. It's a little slippery. But um, just measure, 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 measure. Because I've, I've already printed a couple parts that don't fit the best that I'm probably going to have to scrap. Um, depending on the time of day, this fits perfectly or it's a little tight. Um, so the rest of the hand, so that, that, that file I was telling you about, um, it gives you the palm, the back plate, it gives you a bunch of other parts. An Iron Man hand is an Iron Man hand. They, they're all pretty much the same thing. Um, if you're using one from the Mark VI on the Mark 50, you're not going to be able to tell. There's an arc reactor, there's fingers, whatever, makes, whatever works for it. So for the fingers, it, gives, it lets you print them all, all uh, together in little rows, little neat, nice little rows, and then pop them off um, the printer and start attaching them. So how do you attach them? How do you keep them like this? So this was made with elastic band. I got this off um, Amazon or eBay, really cheap. It's a really good stretchy elastic band. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's thick and it reacts pretty well to super glue. I went through a couple different uh, styles. I went through rubber bands. I went through a few different things trying to find something that actually reacted well with super glue and this was it it's very cheap and easy to use and all i did was cut little strands and glue them all along the backs of the fingers so i can stretch these out and they go right back to the normal uh position i was able to use it for the back plate so you can lift it up so this is all one piece that i can just like i said i can slide right in and out of it gives me full range um and it, it's actually pretty comfortable there's there's really no issues and then if you have like a morph suit on under it, or that, that's what I'm going to have, uh, it'll cover up all the finger slots. Um, I've cleaned this up a little bit, already started sanding it a bit, so I'm, probably, I'm just going to paint this as one piece, see how it goes. Worst case, if I have to cut, cut the elastic out, I cut it out, get rid of it, and uh, I'll just put it back together. I have plenty of the stuff, so this worked great. So moving on to the forearm. Like I said, uh, I got pretty lucky with this. both of these first prints. First shot, they worked. Uh, they fit me very well. Forearm's a little tight. I'm still trying to stretch that out. Well, but wait, how do you stretch something out after you've already printed it? Um, your oven. This worked. My forearm did not just slip right through this. There was a little bit of tweaking. I had to flare out the, right here a little bit. But all you did, all I did is pop it in the oven. Um, I don't know, like 300 degrees, maybe like a few minutes, take it in and out, in and out, and you get it just so it's a little malleable or pliable. And at, be careful, don't burn yourself, but you can put your arm through it and stretch it out, you can mold it, and that let me kind of get everything exactly where I need to be. Um, the next thing I gotta work out is this little section down here. This was printed with the forearm. I should have sliced it off. I might just get rid of this and let the uh, morph suit kind of fill that area in, because it really does limit my mobility right now, right? so I, I can't even touch my own head, so that's kind of a problem. Um, aside from comfort and size, it's not too bad, a little pinchy, but there's just some sharp bits I still have to trim down and it's going pretty well so far. Um, the quality of my prints has increased significantly, so I don't even need to use Bondo anymore, so that's great. So another bit I'm really excited about um, is the hand toppers, the back, the, the back of the hand plates. So since this is the Mark 85, I had to print the back hand plate for the left hand, which just sits right there, kind of like that, and that'll be secured with, again, rub, uh, elastic bands and however. But the other one that I'm really uh, stoked about is the one for the Infinity Gems from the final scene, the final snap of uh, Endgame. I was able to get the, um, it's called the Stark Tech Gauntlet. The other one's the Nano Gauntlet and the Infinity Gauntlet. And what it, all it does is it sits right back here, right in the palm, or right in the back of the hand. And I need, I just need to secure it to get it to move properly. Um, I'll most likely secure it to the back of the palm, or back of the hand. This way it stays in that spot and then it'll slide up and down the forearm. Um, I've seen some people just kind of attach it like that, but it kind of limits mobility. So I think something like that will work great. It has slots for all six stones. I'm so excited to paint this up, get this to look nice. Uh, I'm gonna be resin casting the stones so I can put LEDs behind them so they all glow nice and pretty. So that'll be some really nice wiring. What this also does is it serves the purpose of kind of hiding that joint and kind of making everything flow and look a little bit more seamless. This, same way I scaled everything else is the same way I scaled this. I measured from where, where the thumb was gonna be over to the side of the hand and it, I, but this time I measured the actual printed hand, not my hand, because this would be way too small then. So just think about it when you're measuring and scaling. If it takes you a few days to measure things and you feel confident before you print, do it. 
Um, it, it'll save you time, it'll save you money, it'll save you material. So those are the hand toppers done. So let's talk about failures. Um, aside from the occasional failed print that just gets knocked off the bed or maybe uh, it was positioned wrong and it falls over, I have a little bit of a collection of those. Um, that's no big deal. The big thing that probably set me back was the abdominal area. Um, if you can see this nicely, I hope you can. Oh, let's get some white on it. This thing came out flawless. I, I, couldn't, have, I, I couldn't have asked for this to come, come out better. Um, it's smooth, it's accurate. It was printed in two pieces, so I can fold it over. Um, it was going to be seam welded and smoothed over. Problem is, it's too small. I've been scaling this stuff all down to about 90 to 85 percent. Um, so I followed suit with this without doing any measurements, just jumping from the scale of the arms over to the scale of my waist and torso, and I didn't measure anything. And this is way too small. So after I realized that it, uh, it didn't reach uh, the bottom of my chest to like my waist, it was just too tiny, I actually took some real measurements, took my time, did some measurements with paper, did some measurements with tape, and this worked beautifully. This worked exactly how I needed it to. And that's from the top to the bottom of where I need it to be. So this is all, all one crotch piece. This is the ab section, now in two parts, and then the chest section. As you can see, it needs to come up to that line that's right above it. It doesn't. It is way too small. This is the actual size that I need. So um, I'm actually trying to sell this. Maybe somebody else can use it if they're making it for their kid or if they're skinnier or shorter. I don't know. Um, hopefully I, this just isn't a waste because it came out really nice and I'd hate to just throw it out or let it just sit on the sideline. So if you're watching this and you're doing a Mark 85 build and you want a nice waist section, hit me up. Maybe we can do a trade or something. Uh, just pay me for the filament and I'll ship it to you. So catastrophe pending, um, I started reprinting it. It was actually kind of a saving grace a little bit, trying to look on the, uh, get you know, the silver lining of it all. And uh, I was able to split it into two sections. Actually, like the, uh, the model shows from the guy wearing the suit in the, uh, the, the whole preview image. So this is just one section. Now, this is the size I need it to be. And as you can see, it's almost the size of the entire other print. It's the bottom two abs section, which ends about there. Um, honestly, even like stacking it like this doesn't look too bad, but it just, it wouldn't look right. So I printed the bottom section, again, two pieces, came out good. Then I had a little bit of a failure, print failure, on this upper section, which sits right about here. So that'll sit there. It'll be in two sections and we'll move it independently. I had a little bit of a layer shift, so I had to kind of, I cut it apart and re-glued it. I'm letting it dry right now, but this is, this will be the section that sits kind of right up here under my arm, and it, it fits way better than the other one. Um, right now I'm printing off the other side of this, and then I'm printing off the little, I cut out the little ab sections that sit there, that's why there's those holes. So it'll all, it'll all have to be fused together, which is no problem at all. I'm looking forward to it, and it could have been much worse. And in case you haven't noticed already, I've also gotten another printer. I was able to get this off of somebody super cheap. Um, they were having issues with it. Um, issues that were brought on from the factory. Uh, there was things built wrong right out of the box and it just sent them down this rabbit hole that they just couldn't come out of. I got the printer from them, tore it down, rebuilt it, and it's printing beautifully. So this will help speed things up. Uh, I'll probably start printing things for people trying to make a little bit of money to pay for this. So that'll help. Let's talk about the helmet. Um, not really big, not really much else on this. This is kind of turning into more of a test bed because it's too big. I'm probably gonna just, re like I said, I'm gonna reprint this whole thing. This is more of a shelf topper at this point, but it's giving me a chance to experiment on things. I threw some padding in there to try to get it to fit better and you know how, how, uh, how it'll feel on my head and the pressure points, getting it to stay. That, so that's been great. Um, it fits beautifully, um, just with minimal foam. Uh, I'm still working on the actuator system just to get it to lift up, but the, other, the big thing I was able to do was get it to actually light up. So these are these really cool eyes off of eBay that you can see through even when they're lit up. Um, you can't see them through the, the, they're not that great when they're lit up, but when they're off, you can see directly through them. And if you turn the light on, yeah. So if you're walking around a convention, if you're walking around, you can see 95% through these when they're off, they're great. They're super cheap and easy to use. They come with a little battery box. Um, I believe they're uh, three volt or five volt LEDs. They look just like this. 
if you search eBay for, um, I think it's LED, LED cosplay eyes, and it'll be a picture of a Batman helmet, and it's these same eyes, and they're shaped like this, in these little plates. They're square, they come perfectly square at first, and with a little bit of heat and patience, you can actually bend them and form them. And that's what I was able to do in the helmet to get them to kind of sit where I need them to. You can also trim them, cut them. If you look in how to cut acrylic, this works great. I very much suggest taking your time because as you flex them and heat them, if you're not doing it enough, they'll snap just like I broke this one. So this one's kind of useless now. Um, I'll probably use the LEDs and the plates for LEDs around the suit itself, maybe on the waist. But what I found out that is if you, ha if you have it on, as long as what you're looking at is brighter, uh, bright enough, you'll be able to see it. Like I can see the light on the GoPro, my camera, I can see parts of the room, but if you get into the dark area, you, don't really, you won't be really able to see. Um, you can extend the wire, put it anywhere, add a switch, that's fine. That's, that's um, all the electrical wire will be for later. But this thing, somebody suggested me this little LED, and it's been <clears throat> absolutely great for uh, getting the helmet to look how I want. And then when it sits there on the shelf, I think it looks pretty nice, kind of just glowing there. So the helmet's almost done. I'm um, still working out, like I said, the actuators and getting it to lift up and everything. Um, I think that that about does it. I've moved on to the waist section. I'm moving up, going to do the chest next, then start working on the back. I want to get the whole torso section done. Then I'm going to print the shoulders, depending on how much space there is. Uh, then moving on to the legs. Um, this has been quite a trip. It's been uh, a diff more difficult than I thought it was going to be. So if you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, hey, idiot, why would you do it that way? Or hey, man, why don't you try this? Um, I know a lot of people were interested in how I got the hands to you know, work and look pretty decent. Um, so message me, comment, do whatever you need to. I'm hoping this helps at least one person in their build or like, oh, gee whiz, that's a, that's a pretty good idea. Um, I'm going to do another video on my print settings. A lot of people have been asking about that on how I'm getting them so smooth. And I'm getting really lucky with these. So this is by no means skill. This is just, uh, yeah, this is, this is just dumb luck. So, um, yeah, thanks for watching.